Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Hey, guys. Hope you're doing well. Today, it's November 4th. This is the Get Your Fish On video podcast for November 4th, the day after. That's what I'm calling it. Who knows what the election news is happening? We still don't have a... Well, we have a president, of course. We don't know who has won, the, won uh, this 2020 election year, and and I tried to stay way out of politics. That's not my... That's not my... my that's not my jam at all. It just isn't. Um, today, we're going to talk about a lot of things. I mean, it's been two weeks since we've done this, since I've done this. And quite honestly, in the last two weeks, there's been so much stuff. I've actually, and I'm just going to I'm just gonna throw it out there. I've thought about doing this almost daily. And the news that comes up daily, if there's something interesting or something that happens in the industry, to get on here and do this as quickly as possible, so that I'm not so far behind, because I mean, honestly, I'm not joking. I have I have this page of notes, I have this page of notes, and I have all of this. This is stats, questions, where everyone's from, all regarding the National Professional Fishing League. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. A lot, a lot of stuff. So I'm glad you're here. I want to say hi to Robert, Joe, Matt, Dan. Hi. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, it's been a weird two weeks. I mean, here we are in the off season, and and we're we're already we're not even in the off season. This week, the elites are on are on Lake Fork or up there or wherever it is for the Bassmaster Elites. And during this time, Lee Livesey won an event. Great. Great dude. I was very happy to see him win. One of the fantastic anglers out there. Um, so congratulations to him. I talked to Brandon Palinick. Brandon Palinick and I have been trying to get together and try to do this, but he's had two fishing tournaments. Then he had a central tournament. Now he has another elites. And during the time when we do this, or even at night, when we could probably pre-record, we um, it's just been one of those, one of those things. Uh, so he's just been so busy that we just haven't been able to do it. Let me just put it right out there. Today's show surprise guest. Does it rhyme with Hudro? No, no. Um, Boudreau is taking care of Cheryl. And, uh, from here on out, there's, there's just a lot of changes that have been going on with the show. So, um, I know people keep asking, when, are you guys going back to terrestrial radio? Are you doing that? As of right now, we're not, we're not going back and it's not anything against, iHeart. Actually, it is a little bit about iHeart. They got rid of our producer. And I kind of feel like, why, why would they do that if they want us to come back? That's the, the God's honest truth. I mean, Chris it was a unbelievable huge part of the success of Fish in Florida Radio before we I changed it here, or Mike and I changed it here. So, um, you know, it's one of, those, one of those things. We were going to have, I just got a text from the person we were going to have on, um, we were going to, I was going to have a surprise guest today. We're, we're going to, we're going to, I have an interview, a pre-recorded interview with Jeff Fitz from the national professional fishing league, which we're going to talk about a great interview with him. He's a Florida angler and he's really, to be honest, he's one of what I can find out. I think there's two Florida anglers in the national professional fishing league. So I interviewed him. It's pre-recorded, but our surprise guest today was going to be Randy Howell. And, um, I might pre-record that and just put this on afterwards. Randy has his, um, his boat giveaway. It's not really a raffle. It's a giveaway. And if you go to, um, Kings, uh, you want to, know I have a, a, a link already up here. If you go to kingshome.com slash Randy Howell, you can, King's Home's a great organization. He donates the boat and all the money directly to King's Hope afterwards. So former classic winner, Randy Howell, good friend. Uh, maybe we'll do something. I might do something, but it's, it's really cool. It's a, a great charity and uh, really, I love that he does this. So uh, I'm going to, if you can give me a second, I'm going to say yes. Let's try 1130 Central Time which I think is 1030 
would be 12.30. So we might do it, and maybe I'll go live after this. So if you haven't heard or if you didn't know, there's a couple things that have happened since the last one we did this. They had the Aaron Martins Charity Tournament, which was phenomenal. It was amazing. They had all sorts of interesting and great, funny, um, great uh, people that donated time. Kevin Van Dam, uh, Randy did, Brandon Carr did. A pro there was just a ton of people who donated their time and the opportunity to go fishing with Kevin Van Dam and other people. The thing I found funny about the auction is that the highest bidding... Now, you remember, Kevin Van Dam's on there. You would think he would be the highest person to get money for and when it all when it was all said done because we can see this mark zona had the highest bid for a day on the water at seven thousand five hundred dollars compared to kevin van dam which was six thousand five hundred dollars which is just think about that people would rather go fish with mark zona who's by the way there is nothing wrong with mark zona the dude is phenomenal the guy is great he and I have a great relationship. I love him. I don't know why I'm always rubbing my nose when, when it's time for these shows. I, I seem to get a bug up my, my nose. Um, but imagine that. He outbid. They, someone outbid him to go fish with him instead of Kevin Van Dam. And that brings us, that, that's kind of like a segue into what's going on in this industry. I mean, what's happening? Where has this division been happening? So I've, got, I've caught a little bit of grief. But I just want to tell you how I have to deal with things. So if you're new, we did a radio show called Fishing Florida Radio for 10, 11, 12 years. I don't even know how long we were on the radio, to be honest. It was that long. We weren't just in Florida. We were syndicated throughout Florida. There were a lot of things that we had to do. And we had three hours of live radio that we had to, to come up with. So as the pretty much the main voice, and then I had Mike and Boudreaux. And other people, less, and people who came in. But it was my, it was the format I kind of created. I was the one that came up with the show topics and all that stuff and threw it throughout pitches. And when you do live radio, you, you, to, to come up with three hours of topics is really tough. But that isn't where I want to lead down to. As someone who, I guess I can consider myself media from the stuff that I've done, you have to kind of, balance how you react and you talk to people. I can't get on here and just completely bash one organization. That's not, first off, that isn't my style, but I don't want to have that kind of controversy to get what I call controversy clicks. And that's, oops, sorry. And that's what happens. You start talking about major league fishing or the elites or the new one, NPFL or FLW and people who don't like that are going to get on here and just bash you. And I, and let me just say, I love your opinion. I love your opinion. And I don't even mind talking about your opinion and you helping me learn and be, be a better person. But as a media person, I have to balance what I say and be respectful. That's what it comes down to. Uh, there are things that happen in the industry that I'm going to give you my opinion, such as today, that I don't agree with. And it isn't a matter of, of bashing one person or bashing one group. It's just not how I like, don't, I like to do it. There are many people in the industry that I don't like. One, one has his own damn video podcast that I don't like. I don't agree with it, and I think you'd be nowhere without controversy clicks. But... That group just, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. That's all. And, and really, I'm a nobody in the, in the industry. I might know a lot of people, but you have to be respectful to all of them. So, and, and, and also one what happens is there's a lot of times that I have probably a little bit more insight than I'm allowed to share. I have friends that I've, I've gotten over the years that are, reliable friends that are in the elites or they're in the bass the they're in the bass pro tour or they're in flw and you, you know you have a relationship with them and i can't just come on here and and say their name and then tell them what they do but these guys are in the in the groups in these tournament organizations 
and they want, you know, they, they bounce things off of me and I bounce things off of them. So I can't get on here and just say, say their names. Cause then they'll gonna, it's going to cause more trouble for them. I'm not here to dis dis everybody. I'm going to diss the people I don't like, like my nose right now, which is pissing me off. But I try not to, I try not to stir the pot too much. I guess that's the best way to put it. Can I be controversial and still be honest? Yes. I'm going to give you my honest opinion all the time. It's an opinion. That's what you have to remember. It's an opinion. So. Let's get into what we found out last week or two weeks ago. Major League Fishing announced their 2021 tournament series. You know, they'll be on Grand Lake to start off with on February 23rd through the 27th, going after largemouth fish. Stage one is at Sam Rayburn, which is the controversial one, March 21 through 26. That'll be another largemouth. Heavy hitters at the Falls Jordan in Raleigh, which is another largemouth fishing. Stage two is at Austin Lake Travis, another largemouth fishery. Stage three is here, right here. Harris Chain, Leesburg, May 21st, May 21st through the 26th. That's going to be a largemouth fish. And, and let me just say, well, I'll go through all of them first. Chickamauga, June 4th, largemouth. St. Lawrence River in New York, smallmouth August in August. In June, excuse me, June 25th through 30th, Lake Champlain in New York, August 5th through 10th, and then Lake St. Clair, Michigan, 10th through the 15th of September, which will be the last three one will be smallmouth. If you don't know about these areas, and I know they go to the same places constantly, and the reason they go to the, these places m m more and more is because, first off, the fishery is good. The fishery is good. But second off, there's a, a group of people and fans that have come to enjoy those spots. There's a reason why they go to Sam Rayburn. You want to know why? It has all. It ticks all the, the check marks that they need to have. They need to have enough ample room to host host a tournament there. They got to have the right amount of acreage of places to fish. They need to have it if they have some sort of expo or have people out there. There needs to be boat ramps and enough for fans, even though Major League Fishing doesn't want fans. And then last but not least, it has to be a good fishery. If you look at that schedule for Major League Fishing, the Bass Pro Tour, that's an absolutely fantastic schedule from top to bottom. I'm not joking. In all honesty, all those places that they're going next year are top-notch fisheries and that has a huge that has a huge influence on it now getting back to lake three stage three here on the chair uh, the harris chain in leesburg may 21st through 26th people are already saying this is past the spawn of florida i have to tell you i have to tell you last year terry Strogans, same time of year went out there with a frog i think he caught 32 Five fish, 32. Think about that. It might have been 37. It was something outrageous. He absolutely crushed everybody. When they come to the Harris Chain in Leesburg in May, it is a fantastic time to fish there. And the area is so big. We call Lake the Harris Chain, they've been calling uh, the B Lake Big Fish or something like that. and and Or Lake Big Bass. And this is a fantastic time for these anglers to come down here. First, the weather will start to be good. You won't have as uh, we won't be dealing with the rain that we had to deal with heavy hitters here down here at uh, Toho, but also the fishery on the Harris Chain is stupid. It's it's one of the best. They've done a great job to manage and fish. They've done all this stuff, and it's phenomenal. So this next year's uh, Bass Pro Tour down here on on Major League Fishing. Is a, it is great, but here's where you have to keep it real. Stage one, Sam Rayburn, Texas, May March 21st through 26th, sucks. It sucks. Um, that's the week after the Bassmaster Classic. The Bassmaster Classic is the 19th through the 21st uh, in Texas at Ray Roberts. Now it's still in Texas. But 
the anglers will have two or three days of pre-fishing before it. So while the while Major League Fishing is out there pre-fishing, the Bassmaster Classic is going on. No, 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 no. Stop it. We have a huge division in the in the industry right now. A huge division in the industry. And, and quite honestly, I, I actually think it's going to get worse next year. I know that's crazy to say that. You know, anglers, most of the time, and, and by the way, we should just, to be up front, Major League Fishing said this was going to happen a year and a half ago, two years. Major League Fishing anglers are part of Major League Fishing, the Bass Pro Tour. For them to go over and even though they have sponsors, as much as you might not like to hear this, sponsors pay them to go to the Classic. But Major League Fishing anglers going over to the Elites helps the Elites. It helps everything with bass. These two guys don't like each other. They might say they like each other and they might try to be somewhat cordial to each other when they're face to face, but deep down they don't care about each other. They're they're both are both companies are out for each other. Their 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 goal is to be number one. And right now we know for a fact that major major league fishing is number two. Now their views and stuff that are on uh, online and Discovery Channel are ridiculous. But we know right now in the fan perspective, Bass is king. We know this. There's nothing, there's nothing else to, to say about it. Bass still gets the the fans. The fans' loyalty is still with major is still with the elites. And Major League Fishing, while those guys are the named anglers still, having those named anglers go to the classic, it, it just helps the classic. Major League Fishing doesn't want that. Major League Fishing doesn't want as much as both tournament organizations need each other. They don't want you're not going to see bass anglers go to Redcrest. And that's the that's the real key thing here. It's it's kind of lopsided because everyone goes, "Well, major league fishing guys aren't going to the classic, and it's so bad." Well, why aren't why aren't we bitching about the bass elites not going to the Redcrest? Why aren't you? What's happened is because major league fishing bass pro anglers went into the other organization and started their own thing. It's really, we've become blinders. We all have blinders on. We only see how butthurt we are because of what they, what happened to the leets. But truth be told, the leets should have, if, they're, if their sponsors are over at Redcrest, the leets should go over there too. But they don't. Now, Bass hasn't come out and formally said anglers are not allowed to do that. They haven't done that. Not like Major League Fishing did. Boy, did that 16, 18 months ago, whenever it was. And it pissed off everybody. And I understand that. I'm not, I'm not, I can see both sides of, of the, of the story here. And that's the key to this. As a media person, you need to be able to say both sides. And I need to have the information that's in front of me. That's correct and accurate before I come up here and spew things. Because really anybody can come up here and spew things. That's the truth. Anybody can, I, I welcome you to do it. Anybody can go do that. There's nothing and nothing wrong with it. It's your opinion. You're allowed to do it. But as a fan, and I'm a fan first, I think uh I think it kind of sucks. That's the God's honest truth. I think it sucks. Okay, I'm gonna do a commercial here because I'm gonna go blow my nose and get a drink of water. But while we're doing that, we're gonna watch a little tackle webs um commercial. So be back in a minute. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle Webs. With Tackle Webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels, wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. 
Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at tacklewebs.com. There we go. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. I don't know what, what's going on. Anyway, so Major League Fishing, we talked about that. Next, if you didn't know, fishing license sales are up in 45 states, and the average is up 14%, of which 20% of those anglers are first-time anglers, and that makes no sense. I don't know why I wrote that. Uh, really, most of them are, are, are first-time anglers that haven't fished in the last five years. Three million more licenses have been sold through 2020 of August compared to 2019, and tackle stats reveal tackle sales are up 30%. So congratulations, and that's fantastic news for us. Fantastic news for us. Next, if you didn't hear, Lose and Strike King changed their names to Ratner Outdoors. Kind of happened without any fanfare and didn't know anything about it. Um, just saw it on Fishing Tackle Retailer and uh, kind of kind of glad. Lose and Strike King together. Uh, if you lose, Strike King is a fantastic fantastic uh lure manufacturer and great great people i know mark copley with them even though i was supposed to do a bunch of stuff with them it just hasn't worked out but i'm i'm happy to see that they're doing well next we this the past weekend was the 2020 crappy expo in branson missouri i had a little issue with this and i'm glad it's over with now they were doing every person who came in had to pay ten dollars for admission and i found this a little bit i didn't like it when you go to these expos like the Classic or the Red Crest or even at the Bass Elites, anything that has an expo, usually nine times out of ten, the expo is free. It's to get people in, charging ten bucks. And then the attendance, while I heard it was decent, all the videos and stuff I saw was not really that good. And I would say to the Crappy Masters and Mr. Crappy and all that stuff, Maybe, maybe not charge people 10 bucks to come in. I mean, you're charging for booth space. I mean, I know you have to get the money for, they had a $200,000 um, crappie tournament. I mean, figure that one out. $200,000 to be the crappie master. Um, that is unbelievable. Fat, absolutely fantastic. So, but not as many people were going to it. Branson, Missouri. I mean, Missouri is just on fire with anglers and stuff. And really, I got to thank Mark Tomlinson that's on it, from Missouri. He is promoting us all the time. Him and Hank, they don't realize this, but Hank and Mark have a shout out in one of the videos that I did just now uh, that'll be posted in a couple few weeks. So always good for them. Uh, also, Melinda Mays, the first co-angler BFL regional title on Table Rock. She is... Uh, the second woman who will compete in the All American, including Terry Davis, back in 2021 uh, for 2021. So congratulations! Imagine that. I mean, it, it shows you. I mean, we think that, and, and this is gonna. I don't mean this to sound anywhere bad, and I don't know Melinda at all. And, and I, from what I understand, she's a fantastic angler. But I got to be honest. I love that she kicked all these men's asses. I do. I love it. There was a time a, a couple of years ago. There was one of the the guys that who was in one of the Bass Nations or the Central Opens, and during the the Classic, he had he on the second day he just had he just killed everybody, and we were at the Classic and we we're doing our interviews and stuff, and I think it was in Tulsa in fact, and I went up to him and I said, "How does it feel kicking all these guys all, all these pros asses?" And uh, he, the guy was so straight laced. He just, he finally broke down and, and had a good time. It was a good interview. And I don't even remember his name because there's been so many and I apologize, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to see Melinda get in there. Uh, she was a co-angler, first co-angler BFL regional title on table rock. Congratulations to Melinda. And uh, if I wait, had a way to get in touch with her, I would uh, get in touch with her and have her on the show and ask her how, how it felt to beat all these guys. That is awesome. Okay, L a couple things. Outfitters Day at Ritz Carlton, January 9th, 11 to 4 p.m. here in Orlando. If you're here, the Outfitters Day is great. Ritz Carlton, I'll be out there with my buddy Mark Benson and a whole bunch of other people. Shimano usually shows up, Sims, uh, DOA, a bunch of people show up. Uh, it's just a good, it's a quaint little way to go out there and say hello and meet some new people they have a fly fishing long uh 
a fly fishing contest. It's really, it's, it's really pretty cool. Oh, look at this. Ray has finally figured out how to get on the live show while I'm doing the live show instead of it being pre-recorded on YouTube. Okay. Hey, Ray. And then next, if you missed it, and I, I don't know how I got a hold of this, Animated Lure was on Shark Tank. I don't, and, and somebody offered him a ton of money. I don't understand it. I really, really, really don't understand it. If you miss that, there's a closer look of the animated lure red tail chub. It's I beat the snot out of the out of the lure at the end with a hammer because it was just a piece of crap. It was a piece of crap, but I think they got two or three hundred thousand dollars from one of the guys on Shark Tank, and I wish them all the best of luck. I only say this is because that video has had more views in the last forty eight hours than any video that we've done. Now, the Shimano Vanford video gets views nonstop. I mean, for our little, my little channel, it's, it does well. But that video has been ridiculous. It's done fantastic. So if you want to see a funny video, it's a little long, but it's honest. It's straight up. But honestly, someone, one of those Shark Tank guys gave them like two or three hundred thousand dollars, I think. It was stupid. It's the biggest gimmick of all time. It's it's crap. And anyway, it's on it's on there. By the way, it's still on water. Dose soda. Been almost a year. Okay, last but not least, before I get into my interview with Jeff Fitz. Man, I've done a lot of inter I've done a lot of research going back into and looking at the National Professional Fishing League. If you don't know about the National Professional Fishing League, they're going to start next year. They're going to try to coincide or try to be part of, not part of, but they're going to try to make their, their tournaments happen when the Central Opens aren't happening and when the Elites aren't happening. And I, I think that's a great idea for them. I'm, I'm completely confused on everything na uh, National Professional Fishing League there is, the NPFL. I'm confused about everything. We still don't know that their schedule. I will say Major League Fishing putting out their schedule with all the FLWs or the the big fives was the way ahead of the game. The elites haven't done theirs yet, but the elites are still fishing, and usually they don't announce most of their stuff till after it's all done. NPFL, we've had Brad Fuller and we've had some of the other guys from NPFL, but I'm just confused. I'm so confused by what's going on with them. Um. As of right now, it's November 4th. They have 92 of the 125 anglers on there. And I have looked up, no joke, every one of them. Every one. I've looked up how many wins they've had, how many events they've done, how many top 10s, and then their earnings. Now, I didn't do all of the earnings. And I don't mean any disrespect to the anglers on NPFL because I don't have Jeff Fitz on here in a second. But I really believe the NPFL is going to be, and I don't know if they want this title or they mind this title. It's the Working Man's Fishing League. It is. It is. We had Brad Fuller on several weeks ago and maybe two months ago. And Brad said, um, asked, had me, asked me a question saying, how many pro anglers actually only do professional fishing as their as their stuff. And I kind of agreed that not many. However, in doing more and more research on the anglers that are joining NPFL, I've come to realize that 99% of the guys that are on NPFL are going to not only have normal jobs, but they're also going to fish during the weekends. When I look at the elites and then I look at the MLFs guys, those guys, pretty much a majority of them all fish for their living. Some of them might guide extra, but a majority of them fish. That's not the case for the MPFL. I think there's probably only four or five that are just going to strictly fish. Because NPFL is not only the most expensive tournament there is, but as of right now, it also has the least amount of money that you can win for first place. You know, you win a, you win a Major League Fishing event, you get $100,000. You win a Bass Elites, and you get $100,000. Now, the MPFL is $50,000 to win. MPFL is also $5,000 a tournament. $5,000. Now, they, they put that money, the money they, that they have, they, you know, they're, they're 
in all total, they'll bring out in all total, they're going to bring about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in in revenue for tournaments, and they're, they're you know they're putting out six hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. So they're putting that the rest of that money towards towards their championship. My my feeling is about this is their first couple of years. I don't know if I think they're going to be in the hole. I think they're going to be in the red. I don't think they're going to make a lot of money. And I think that if they don't make a lot of money and or they just cover their costs, that it hurts them as a, as a league. Um, for years and years and years, FLW didn't make money. There might be people who say they did. There at the end, FLW was not making money. They were in the hole. I know... I know for a fact, at least three million. Um, National Professional Fishing League, like I said, they're they're bringing in all these guys. No offense to them, that nobody knows. There's only now Jeff. Jeff's the only one I've ever heard of now, and I had to look up Jeff, and and really I looked up Jeff because he was a Florida angler, and you'll see the 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 interview with Jeff. He's fantastic. Um, I, I want to see the NPFL do well, but I, I want to see where their, their marketing influence is going to be. I've had two or three people, well, I'm going to be truthful. I've had three people tell me that they're relying on Fat Cat and Luke as that their fans are the people that are going to watch NPFL. And I don't know if that's going to work. I, I, I don't know what's going to work. And I also think that puts a whole lot of risk. Of, of responsibility on Luke and Fat Cat and, or in Bernard in B, that's what we call him. Um, I'm not. I'm not a hundred. Well, after I talked to Brad Fuller, the truth is, I, I was kind of like, I really like the way that they're going. I like the the path that they're they're following, because they're they're over planning for what's going to happen, and. I like that as somebody who does this thing, does this show, I am over-prepared. That's the God's honest truth. I don't go in and, and talk about something that I don't know. That's the truth. Um, there's too many times that, you know, you come out and you just start slaying things to talk, to hear yourself speak. Um, and, and I don't think that's the way to do this. Um, and you guys might disagree. And I don't mind if you disagree because I don't mind criticism. You know, I've been, I'm a, I've been a graphic designer for 30 years. Well, really 27 years. And one of the things you have to realize is that criticism isn't, isn't bad. There's a lot of people in this industry that cannot take criticism. You know who you are, but cannot take criticism. And they'll bla- they'll bash and talk about all this stuff, and but then when you criticize them or say something that maybe they're doing wrong or that maybe they should be doing differently, they get all over and they just start spouting out at the mouth. And I, and you want to know it? I'm the same way. If I get mad, in, in all honesty, I would love to say what I want to say about certain people. I would love to, but I don't want to. You know, it isn't my. I'm not here to to bash on people. I'm not here to bash on national professional fishing league, but I believe what they're doing is we don't know. Do they have a title sponsor yet? Hank? No, I don't think they have a title. Not that we know of. We don't know of any sponsors yet with national professional fishing league. And my thought behind it is, is that they still have a hundred and let's just say they're at 90 right now. They have 35 more anglers that they need to get involved, collect money from, and then, get in and at this point we're in november 4th their first tournaments in march those 35 anglers are already at a complete disadvantage truth be told you start doing sponsorship stuff in in at the beginning of the season you don't do it at the end of the season you know you don't have money to drop off for for stuff in november december it's just gone and what is and what's going to be opening up in January, February is already, already being used by people that are 
in other leagues and tournaments. And you can get non uh, epidemic m whatever sponsors, m adept whatever that word is. I can't even say it. But those anglers that are now being looked at and are are possibly going to be part of it, they're behind the eight ball of doing this. You'll see in the inter- interview with Jeff, he even says this is a huge financial commitment for him. And most of these guys, these guys, some of these guys have never won a tournament. Stats show. Here, look. Of the 92 anglers who've been in that are, are registered and on the MPFL, they have they have been in 3,000. 265 pro events. Now there's a few kids that are college guys that are moving in. So I can't really, I couldn't really find out too much about them, but of the ones I could find 3,265, how many wins? Now, none of these guys, there's only one guy on here. That's actually fished a Bassmaster classic. Most of them are BFLs, FLW, some pro circuit guys, but one there's been, there's been two guys who fished for the elites. Charlie Ingram Ingram fished the elites from 1984 to 1994. Charlie Ingram's one of the guys who has the most amount of money. One, but Charlie is 75 years old. 75 years old. Looking at my notes. So, if if I were to tell you that they've that these guys have fished 3265 events. How many wins have they had? 35. 35. What made Major League Fishing so popular, or not even popular, or do so well at the beginning is because the anglers from Major League Fishing moved over, and while you might like it or might not like it, they moved over, created their own their own tournament schedule, but they were named anglers. They were named anglers. There's very, very few named anglers on the MPFL. If they're relying on Luke and Bernard or B Bernard, Fat Cat, to for their early success, I don't know if that's the correct model to go forth. This has nothing to do with Luke or or Fat Cat, zero, nothing at all. I'm not I'm not taking pot shots. I'm not doing anything like that. I actually feel like there should be something in place. So it doesn't rely on them as is. Charlie can outfish me in his walker. <laughs> yeah, Charlie's Charlie's 75 years old. Um, but t- to rely on Fat Cat and Luke's audience for initial viewership and that kind of stuff, I think is the wrong way to go. I just do. And I don't know if it's going to be successful. I don't know. I, I'm in the case now where, you know, after I talked to Brad, I was all, I was all high. I, I was drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, now that I've done even more research on the anglers, where they come from, and, and not even knowing what the schedule holds, um, I kind of feel like they're, 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 they're going to have a struggle. And they know they're going to have a struggle as is. But my God, they're really going to, it's going to start off and I, and I could be wrong. This is just an opinion, but it's going to be a tough one. I have a a feeling it's going to be a tough one. And it isn't just my feeling. I've talked to other industry people and I've talked to, um, you know, publishers of magazines and editors and anglers and all sorts of people. I would like to see the NPFL get some sort of big name guy. You know, when I talked to Brad, he said I was gonna. There was gonna be people that I would know because there was gonna be some Florida anglers, and I and really other than Jeff, I don't know anybody on here. And I know Jeff now because I did an interview with him two days ago, and I love him now. He's like a brother. So uh, we wish. I, I wish. I think this MPFL we're gonna talk to a lot more here in the upcoming, you know, months. But like I said, it's it's. It's a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. Okay, next, I'm going to put on the interview with National Professional Fishing League angler, professional angler, Jeff Fitz. 
you'll hear a great interview with him. Good dude. Uh, I had to edit out just a bit. I'll be truthful. We lost, um, he was doing it on his phone, and every time the phone rang, uh, it would cut off audio, so I had to cut that part out because I didn't want you guys to see it. But other than that, I didn't cut anything else out, but I just want to keep it real. So after that, I'll get back on here, talk a little bit more, but here's this interview with National Professional Fishing League angler, Jeff Fitz. Our next guest is the only Florida angler, well, right now, I think there might be two, so just hold on there, uh, joining next year's new tournament series, the National Professional Fishing League. He served our great country while he was in the Navy. Thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, he's been a professional angler for with the BFL and won the Costa FLW series on Dardanelle in 2016. His sponsors include Falcon Boats, Power Pole, Merle, Mercury, Motor Guide, Lorance, Strike King, Luz, Rapid Fishing, Bob's Marine Shop, Cigar, Trick Step, Odyssey Batteries, and Vexen Fishing. I couldn't be happier to have with us on the show right now, Jeff Fitz. Jeff, good morning. Welcome. Thank you for being here with me, man. Good morning. How are you? I'm um, great, man. Enjoying this uh, kind of cold day here in Florida. No. Uh, 47 at my house this morning. Forty. It was, it was 52 when I took Thomas to uh, swimming this morning, and it was like, yeah, hell yeah! This is this is what I'm talking about. It's about time. Yeah, we we need the cool down for sure. Yeah, we we definitely do. Uh, tell me a little bit. Of, uh, I I have some questions. Tell me tell me first how you got introduced into the outdoors. Oh man, I mean I've lived outside. I mean I was pretty much a country boy my whole life, you know, and uh, just uh, as far back as I can remember, I've lived in Live Oak, Florida, on the Swanee River, and. Um, my parents divorced early and then my dad got custody of me when I was about 12 and moved to this little town called Keystone Heights, just outside of Gainesville and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, played football and, and fished and hunted. And that's pretty much all I know is the outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was, when was the decision to, to turn to go pro? Did you do? Did you start doing as a co-angler or did you jump straight in? Tell me how that, that system worked for you. Oh, I kind of jumped straight in. I mean, I, I, uh, I had three kids and, uh, put my wife through college after our kids were born and, uh, had grown for a while because we didn't think that, uh, we wanted our kids to be in daycare while, she, while we both worked. So, mm -hmm. um, once they got a little bit older, then I started traveling a little bit and, I started in the BFLs, you know, kind of the grassroots thing and was, was really successful at that level. And, and then, uh, went to the Southern opens in, uh, 2008 and, uh, had a great start. I never foul hooked a bass off the bed in my life. And the very first day, my first fish, I foul hooked an eight pounder off the bed and, uh. you know, your heart just kind of just goes, Oh my gosh. And, um, but, and my co anchor's like, man, that's a legal catch, put it in the box. And I'm like, I, I just can't do it. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm probably more particular to rules than anybody in the world. I mean, you know, Shaw Grigsby's one of my closest friends and I kind of, I try to model everything. And, you know, if I could be a 10th of the fisherman he's been, I'd be successful. Yeah, he's up in that area. You're up uh, by Gainesville, that ish area. That's his. That's his home waters. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, Charles one of my best friends. We live about thirty five miles apart from each other, and yeah, you know, his kids are like my kids, and he's got some land up in South Carolina that we go up and hunt on, and um, it's just he he's like a like family to us. We're that close. Speaking of hunting, I saw on your one of your uh, your. On your Facebook page, your wife got a really nice gator when two, two, three nights ago. Uh, yesterday morning, last day of the okay. gator season, for the, and um, on Noonan's Lake in Gainesville, and uh, it was a nine foot three inch gator. Man, it was uh, it was a riot, and to to watch her and the excitement, and you know, it was it's just great. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that I didn't realize the season was at at the end, but I guess that kind of makes sense, really. I mean, yep. these days, I mean, everything is, you know, 
November 1st. So now you're, you've went from the BFLs. Now you're going and coast series and that kind of stuff. You're now joining the, the national professional fishing league. When, how did that all come about for you? Did, and also, did you realize you're like the only Florida angler so far that's joined? No, I, I had no idea. I was surprised uh, when when you texted me the other day and said I was the only one in Florida. I, I was kind of blown away. There might be one more. There's I, the problem is I've done my list of research on on everybody. There's one person that is a younger angler that I haven't been able to find out really anything that could be from Florida, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But as of right now, you're you're it. You're our our lone hero. <laughs> for everybody else yeah they're uh we're right at a hundred or real close to a hundred right now and i think they'll take another 25 and that's it you know and that's that's one of the things i like so much about the npfl is um i've, I've known brad fuller for several years now and um i did an event helping flw out this year uh as a media boat in the harris chain and yeah. Brad was there and we talked a long time about this and, and, uh, I just, I got such a good feeling and, you know, the, the ownership of this organization are all fishermen, you know, Al owns the big bass clash and that they have these hundred thousand dollar big bass tournaments. I mean, it's unheard of, um, you know, Brad owns Omega, uh, custom tackle and, and Paul owns cash and rods. And so, mm -hmm. All these guys have deep, deep roots in fishing and they've all tournament fished and they know about tournament fishing. And so as a tournament fisherman, you know, and I see things going in directions that I'm not real happy with, you know, maybe it's uh, director changes or something. I mean, you know, I fished with Ron Lappin just about my whole time at FLW, mm -hmm. which I think is the greatest tournament director in the history of the planet. I mean, he was such a great guy. and. Ron and I built such a relationship that was, it's just incredible that, you know, and, and I feel that with these guys at the NPFL and uh, they're going to max at 125, no matter what, they will not take another boat, you know, and at the tour level in FLW, they go, oh, you know, we're going to take 150 and you look at the roster and there's 180 and, and, um, you know, and I've always been the guy that went out of my way for my co-anglers and you can ask every co-anglers i've ever had i do everything i can for them to catch fish i've pulled them up and let them sit on bed and fish and catch them that i misjudged that hurt me and and uh, cost me money but you know it's they're men and women too and they get up in the morning and they're there to compete just like we are and um i've loved fishing with co-anglers but i'm extremely excited about not having a co-angler in the boat I, I, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. Uh, uh, but we, while we're on co-anglers, is, is it tough to have a co-angler in the back? And like, have you ever been in the? Have they ever at any at any point outfished you, even though you're five and they're three? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, there was a, a case we was on Okeechobee several years ago, and I missed the cut by ounces, and. uh we had had a storm blow in and I had 20 pounds in the boat pretty quick. And I was trying to manage fish, you know, multi-day tournaments. And, but I wanted to catch one more big fish and a storm blew in and it kind of muddied up the water. And I had these fish marked on my GPS and I had visual sights of where I thought they were, the beds were in my head, you know, which my memory is not what it used to be. But so I'm, I'm blind pitching to these spots with looking at my waypoints and I hear a big blow up and I look back, at this blow up, my co-anger was throwing a toad and he threw it past a little patch of bulrushes, which I had an eight pounder sitting at. And uh, she came up and hit his toad, you know? So when, when a, the guy behind you catches big fish, it just, it kind of deflates you because you know you were going to have an opportunity to catch that fish and now it's gone. And, you know, you take an eight pounder out of your bag and it's, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. That's, that's huge fish, huge fish. Do you, uh, do you consider yourself more a finesse fisherman or, or like a power fisherman? Do you like, it looked like when I watched, I watched some of the, the stuff on YouTube about your win on Dardanelle, which we'll get to in a little bit, but it looked like you were pitching, uh, like worms and that kind of stuff. Is that your, the, your favorite type of fishing or what's your favorite type of fishing? I love flipping. If you put a, a seven and a half to, you know, or longer rod, 
and an ounce, ounce and a half weight in my hand, I can do that all day long. And uh, I'm real comfortable with it. And Dardanelle was a kind of a unique situation. We had major cold fronts come in and, and un, unbelievingly to me, the guys up there, they just pitch stuff on the outside of the mats. They don't punch the middle like, of them. Like we do. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's where they were at. They were in there tucked up in the grass trying to warm up because the sun heats up the grass. And, you know, it was, I think the last day of the tournament, it was 26 degrees that morning. And, you know, as a Florida guy, that's hard on me because, yeah. you know, it's 95 degrees is, is great. And 26 is not. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I think I'm pretty versatile. Um, Dirk bait's probably my worst thing. I hate throwing a jerk bait, but Shaw's taught me so much about drop shot and, you know, finesse stuff. And, you know, I, I keep a half a dozen uh, spinning rods in the boat because I know that there's times when you got to use them. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing about the one thing, and it, hopefully we'll hear soon about where the NPFL is fishing. Cause right now we're getting kind of, we're getting kind of, in the area where your first fishing tournament's in, in, in March. And we still have, I think there's 92 anglers so far. They've got, uh, they've, they've got registered. So they still have a, f a few left to get in there. Uh, and hopefully they get that done soon because I imagine those anglers got to start working on sponsorships and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, I don't know if I've said, maybe I have said on the radio show and I don't mean to discredit anyone, but I kind of feel like the MPFL is almost like the working man's league. Do you kind of get that feeling that it's because there isn't, there isn't the star power that we've seen with, well, with major league fishing moving, starting, there was all those, those guys. Is that how, are you guys kind of viewing that? Have you guys talked about being, having, a, not wanting a label, but creating a label such as that? I, you know, I don't know that we want to create that label. Uh, if you look at all the leagues out there and all the fishermen, there's definitely space to have another tour level event, without a doubt. Um, you know, some of the sponsors get a little tight because money is hard, and especially this year. You know, this COVID year has has been unexplainable, yeah. 100% unexplainable. So everything's a little different. But, you know, back to the MPFL schedule, they have announced the first tournament officially. Um, you know, they did that with Luke Duncan uh, in his show one night. And so so the NPFL has yeah. officially announced the first tournament. Yeah. Luke Duncan on the show, which is four hours from the house. So, See, yeah, the first one's in. I think we're having some. No, no, no. I think it might be uh, just. Like, isn't the first one on Lake Ufala? Yeah, Lake Ufala. Yeah. Have you ever fished there before? I have. I love Lake Ufala. Yeah. What kind of, what kind, is that more, I, you, did you just say that? How far is that from your house? It's uh, four hours, four and a half. Oh, okay. So it's not too bad. So it's, it's, that's kind of close to me, actually. I'm yeah. in Orlando. Okay. So, uh, so we, we talked about your strengths. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. do you, like one of the things I'm wondering is, are they going to have more tournaments up north, or are they going to have more tournaments down south? I mean, to be successful, you have to kind of win down south anglers. But there's so many, when I start looking at all the stats of where all the anglers are, I mean, there's most there's there's more Texas and Ohio people than anybody. Um, so I'm wondering if they they kind of. You know, you kind of get those Lake St. Clair la lakes, or do you, have you had heard any news on where else they might go fishing? Yeah, we pretty much know uh, there's there's a little bit out there that's changing up, but we've been asked not to say anything until yeah. they do the press release, and uh, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. It's going to be some new places for me, and um, which I seem to do good at new places for some reason. I guess. I don't go by my history and, you know, cause my history is not the greatest and sometimes. And uh, so going and finding new water and going back to the basics, um, I'm pretty excited about. When, when you, are you going to try to fish just the NPFL or are you going to try to also fish some, some FLW, BFL, Costa, whatever they call them? Um, it just depends. You know, this is a, a big stretch of financial commitment for me. 
Uh, I'm going to the point I'm going to buy a truck camper from one of my Falcon team members, uh, Patrick Walters. He's got a, a slide in truck camper and I'm going to get that and uh, to try to save some expense throughout yeah. the year. It's going to be a lot of driving for me from Florida. How, how, how does that, does that put a strain on your relationship at home? I know you have a couple, you have three kids, two daughters and a son, uh, and your wife, are they going to, is your wife going to join you or are you going to, uh, bachelor it up? No, I'll, I'll bachelor. My kids are all grown and gone and okay. you know, we've been in for a few years. And at first it was a culture shock, you know, and when our girls left, cause my, our son's the oldest, it, it didn't seem so bad. Um, because our son was still here and when he left and then the house was completely empty, it was like, Oh my gosh, no. And <laughs> gotten used to it. And we talked to our kids all the time. We have great relationships with them. And, um, and my wife has supported me so much that I was probably going to quit fishing after this season. And she's like, no, you got to do this. And then, you know, we're very, very faith based. So I've prayed a lot about it and I just felt moved um, that this is where I have to be at. I just think that this is where it's going to be best for me and my face and my family. How does your belief in God help you when you're out there fishing? Oh man. Uh, I get choked up telling the story, but a hundred percent Dardanelle win was, was an act of God. Cause you know, I had two places that I'd found in practice and, uh, one of them was up in Spadra Creek, which is about 20 miles from the takeoff. And the other place that I found was two miles from the takeoff and Dardanelle fluctuates so much. And I, I, uh, went into my, my good spot first day and the water had came up a lot and the fish moved farther back than I could get to because the mats were so thick. I could, I couldn't put my push pole through some of them. They were so thick and I didn't get the bite. So I ran to Spadger Creek and I broke off a five pounder and lost a couple fish. And, you know, I, I weighed in seven and a half pounds. I was 90th place the first day of the tournament. And I was distraught because I knew I had the winning pattern. And the second day I go to take off, I'm going to run to Spadger Creek and my, my uh, engine was missing and, and I could not get on plane. So I creep into the, my little two miles at 7.2 mile an hour as fast as I could get. And I get in there and I flip the biggest bag of the entire tournament. And uh, so I sained everything in there. You know, it was just a small little pond. And so I get to the, the way in and get the service trailer and get the motor fixed. We put it in the water. As cold as could be, I'm letting the motor run and warm up. I go to take off. I'm going to run to the creek. And the motor spits and sputters and barely gets on plane. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm coming to my two mile little pocket and I go in there and I catch the biggest bag of the final day and win by 12 ounces. And uh, it's just, you know, God talks to me so much and he talks to everybody, but we don't listen. And, uh, I just, I don't know, faith leads me in everything I do. And I just wish that my faith has been as strong as it is now my whole life. Cause I think life would have been a lot better for me. I have to say as I don't know if you can hear it. The lawnmower men decided to come early, which really now <laughs> has irritated me more than anything. I have to say uh, that in watching in watching the video, and I I would ask everybody who's who's on YouTube to go ch do a search Jeff Fitz Lake Dardanelle, and to see your your interview and how emotional you get is w something to while well, it's something to be proud of. To be honest. Um, I also like that when I watch the video from FLW, ev let me see if I have it on here. Every time you caught a fish, you said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Huh. And uh, I appreciated that even more, that uh, your faith spoke to you. Also, I, I liked I liked that, that I, in the story you tell online is that you got about, there was a, a stretch of water where it was like four foot waves. And out of <laughs> nowhere, miraculously, the boat decides to run just when you get there. And then quit just as you get out of there. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Uh, it's hard for me to talk about that because, uh, you know, eight years in the military and a little bit of time in places that wasn't the greatest. And so I have a little PTSD that acts up every once in a while. And so I, when I talk about things that get emotional to me, it sometimes shows up, and it's kind of embarrassing. But uh, don't let it embarrass you. <laughs> uh, we was we was coming in 
And I don't know anybody that's ever been to Dardanelle. You know, I was back towards Illinois Bayou and the marina. You have to go out into the main river and come around the break wall. Well, we had 25 mile on our wind that day. And the island where the nuclear plant is blocks the wind in, in the bay I was in. But you got to come out into the river and it's blowing straight down the river. And these waves were hitting me sideways. And I don't know if you've ever been in a bass boat idling in four foot waves, but they crashed over the side of the boat. And mm -hmm. I just knew we were wrong. Uh, I was just praying and praying. And, and, uh, man, I'm telling you, it's, uh, God is so good. You know, it, the, the motor like sneezed or coughed and it went wide open throttle. And, uh, we jumped on plane and run around for, you know, it was only about three quarters of a mile and sat down in the Marine and it shut off again. I couldn't get to the, I couldn't even drive it up the trailer. I had to winch it up the trailer. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's just amazing what God has done for me and my family and anybody that says God's not real. If they would have been in the boat with me that week, they, uh, they would have seen a whole different story. It's stories like that. And even the story with Randy Howell winning the classic, uh, several years ago, just well, yeah. someone coming up and just something said, Hey, look, you need to go left. Don't go right. Just go left. And then yep. he ends up crushing it that day and becomes wins the classic. Those are the kind of stories I very much enjoy. And, and you wind up being emotional. To be honest, I have a 10 year old son who means absolutely he is everything in my, my world, everything in my world. And, um, you know, I get him. He's, he's a, a fantastic swimmer. Like the kid's a fish. And I get unbelievably emotional during our swim meets because I'm just so proud. And, you know, yeah. you, be, you become a baby for a little bit, but it's all right. It's what, it's something that we, you know, that we, that's just, it's just what it is. But that story was, in my opinion, spectacular. So don't be, I, I loved watching it, to be honest. I appreciate it. So you have NPFL this year. You're excited about it. What else? He's literally right at my window. Uh, I can't hear it. Uh, he's he's trimming. He's he just scared the living but Jesus out of me. By the way, I didn't. He, <laughs> he's trimming shrubs. I guess you have the NF, NPFL coming up this year. Um, this is this is going to be a positive year for you. I, I have I have a gut feeling. You know, H how excited are you? How excited are you to get back uh, w uh, to get back out on the water? Uh, on a scale of one to ten, I'm at a, like a. 2000 <laughs> uh, uh, it's unreal I, I mean i went to seminole last week with a buddy of mine to pr help him practice for a tournament and uh we had an incredible day yeah and uh our our best five that day in practice would have went about 27 pounds and oh, i no. have not i mean my, the hair on my arms was standing up and i just felt like my whole year coming up was going to be like that and uh I, I'm just, I'm so excited, man. It's just unreal. And, and, you know, the MPFL, one of the things they're doing that I think is amazing is every single day of the tournament, we're pulling our rigs through weigh in. So it's, it's such an opportunity for our sponsors to get showcased. You know, we're going to pull in front of stage and walk off the boat. So no matter what, every single one of us are going to showcase our sponsors every single day of the tournament. You know, they're going to have 12 cameras on the water every day, live streaming all day long. You know, that, that's unheard of. I know, um, you know, Bass and FLW, they have a bunch of cameras, but I don't believe they have anywhere close to 12. And uh, I, I'm just so excited and the opportunities to promote and support the people that support me. And, and, uh, and you know, my faith in God foremost, you know, because without him, you know, none of it's possible. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you completely. Yeah, and and I wish you all the best, the best success this year. Uh, I hope they get some more Florida anglers on this list. You know, I'd like to see a, at least a couple more brothers from Florida. Uh, but I imagine that'll be. We'll find out a little bit more here coming up soon for sure. Uh, you know, it it's such a. I mean, how has how has just my gosh now now they're blowing everything out. Uh, you know, I, I, they usually come at four o'clock. I'm never, I'm never here at, you know, four o'clock when it happens. Um, 
I, I now I not now I lost my train of thought. But anyway, I I wish you all all the best of luck this season. I thank you for the interview. Um, if there's anything I can do to help you out, by all means, let's do it. Let's let's get out there and have some fun and uh, and good luck and God bless. I think, and of course, just as this ended, the audio ended. So uh, I'll just say. I'll just say goodbye and I'll text you after this. Everyone go to Jeff at Jeff Fitz fishing dot uh, at Jeff Fitz fishing on Facebook. Uh, are you on Instagram and that kind of stuff? Are you going to get that kind of stuff? Yes. Awesome. He's going to work on that. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, man. Later, brother. Well, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Notice I still have the same shirt on, by the way. That's how I try to do it. I should say I'm going to get off here right now. We're going to I'm going to end this up. Uh, there were some other things I wanted to talk about. If you didn't see the new Luke Duncan and the LD, oh my gosh, LD and the MC, it's Luke Duncan and Dave Mercer for their first episode. It came out last Wednesday. I think another one comes out today. If you want a different different view of things, maybe not. The first one was a little forced, I felt like, but. I'm pretty sure that it was because they they just got done doing their, you know, an hour interview on Luke's show. But uh, if you want to to watch something interesting, they're going to do a Zoom thing. Go on either the Dave Mercer uh, YouTube channel or the Luke Duncan YouTube channel, and it's LD and the MC video podcast or podcast show. She'll so you'll enjoy that. I'm going to take a few minutes off. Twelve thirty, I should tell you. Randy Howell's on. If you have a question for him, I'm going to put a link in the Facebook page and you can get on live video and you can ask the question yourself. I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but I'll figure it out as I go. Anyway, guys, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This is a November 4th, 2020 episode of Get Your Fish On. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all more than anything. So I hope you are happy, healthy, and able to go fishing. Remember to do a few things. Take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. We will see you soon. Cheers, guys.